Last video, I talked down about JavaScript. And as you can see, it didn't end well for me. Uh oh. So today I will show you how browsers and specifically your website get loaded into the browser. And I promise I'm making this video by choice. So this diagram that you see is how a browser actually works. We're gonna go through each part and explain what it actually does. So the user interface is the visual browser elements. So in the previous video, I kind of went over this very slightly and I said that it's all the UI that you actually see. But that's not correct. It's actually only the browser part of the UI that is considered in the user interface. So that means like this back button, the refresh button, these tabs, all this is the UI of the actual browser. Then we got the browser engine. So when you click refresh or back button or something like that within the actual browser UI, the browser engine is the one that actually executes those commands and has those functions to do the actual things you need to be doing. The data persistence is pretty straightforward. It's the part that actually stores the data. So stuff like your cookies, any local storage, and a couple other things as well. Now the rendering engine, which is probably the most important part of the whole browser. And is definitely gonna be the most important part of this video. So when the user interface and the browser engine take care of the actual browser elements, the rendering engine is basically the website. So it's the actual thing that the browser is presenting. So where this whole section up here was the browser UI and the browser engine, the rest bottom 90% of the site is the actual work of the rendering engine. Now networking is pretty straightforward. Any network requests that need to go in and out, they're handled within the networking part. The JavaScript interpreter interprets the JavaScript. If you're curious to go a little bit deeper, my previous video about WebAssembly goes in and explains what the JavaScript interpreter actually does. And the UI backend is kind of the piece that can't really be covered by any of these other parts. Stuff like pop-up windows that can be triggered within the actual website or by the user interface directly. So things like that are part of the UI backend. So for the rest of this video, we're gonna go through how the website actually gets brought onto your screen. And the process goes to from going from HTML or CSS and JavaScript code to actually being stuff on the actual screen. So it all starts when someone, in this case Bartosz, is trying to go through and access a website. Now before anything is loaded in, they go to the address bar and type in an easy to remember word like Google and then .com at the end. Now Google.com doesn't technically really mean anything to computers. So your browser then goes to a DNS server. A DNS server is kind of like a dictionary that translates all the words that you pass in into your address bar, so google.com, tatuspetra.com, and translate it to something computers can actually understand, which is IP addresses. And you can actually Google this, so in the, so in the public DNS, Google's IP address is 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 so the browser then takes that IP address, and now it knows where to go to get the Google information for the Google web page. So it goes to the server on the IP address 8.8.8.8 .8 and retrieves all the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that it needs in order to display that Google web page. But now how does it go through these actual files that it retrieves and, and turn into pixels you could actually see and interact with on the screen? This is the actual process your browser goes through to actually paint those pixels. First it needs to parse the HTML and create this thing called a DOM tree. We'll cover what that is. At the same time, it parses the CSS code and all the other stuff kind of conjoins it together and creates a render tree, then defines the layout of that render tree and finishes it off with actually painting the pixels. So what's a DOM? Probably heard this word before a ton of times if you've been working in the web space. What does it actually mean? So DOM stands for Document Object Model, which is basically the object representation of HTML. I'll give you an example of this so it might make a little bit more sense. And the second part that's very important is that it's an interface of the actual HTML code that you can manipulate using JavaScript or whatever else. All right, so we said the first step is that when you retrieve the actual HTML code, you need to parse it and turn it into this DOM tree. Here's an example of some HTML code and it's correlating DOM tree. As you can see, each HTML element actually gets converted into an object within the DOM tree. Here we have the HTML and body and then the hello world with the paragraph. And then over here, we have the image. It's basically a tree style architecture of your whole web page. So this is the actual flow that your website goes through. We basically covered this section. So it goes from HTML through the HTML parser and gives us out a DOM tree. Now with the CSS, it goes through a very similar process, except it's using a CSS parser instead of an HTML parser. But then at the end, we get this little attachment, which is kind of everything together. And from that, you create a render tree. The render tree represents a rectangular area that corresponds to the DOM elements. There's a key difference here. The non-visual elements won't actually be in the render tree since they're not visible. For example, in the DOM tree, we saw stuff like HTML and head. Those type of things, since they're not actual visible objects, will not be in the render tree. And this is what a render tree would look like for an example DOM tree. So you see the HTML and stuff like that turns into like a viewport, scroll, and a block. And each of those blocks is a rectangular area that's going to be holding the actual element inside of it. So next big part is the actual layout. So remember the render tree is just a tree of where the rectangles are. 
The layout is the position and size of those. The layout starts at zero, zero of the actual render area. So at the top left corner of the screen and it goes through and figures out the position and size of where these render objects should go. And it uses this thing called a dirty bit system. So every element has a dirty bit that is set to false at the beginning, but if it's layout needs to be updated, that bit set gets, gets set to true. And then instead of having to redo the whole layout for the whole web page, you can only do it for that specific element. So for example, if a button needs to change colors, instead of having to re layout and repaint the whole website, it finds the dirty bit, which is that button and changes the color and the layout of it. And the last stage is actually painting. So going through each of those elements and displaying what you actually want to display. And now this is a exaggerated and slowed down representation of what's actually going on behind the scenes whenever you're rendering a web page. This is all the parts that we went over within the rendering engine. If you want to go even deeper on this topic, there's a link in the description to an article where I learned a lot of this from. And while you're down there, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to go even deeper about what the web actually is, here's a video on the screen called How the Internet Works that I created a couple weeks ago. Man, this one's gonna have a lot of editing.